Hey, this is Andrew Brown, and welcome to the Idwis Cloud Project Bootcamp, where I'm talking about homework and grading, because there's a lot of questions around those two things, because people want to make Red Squad. So I figured I would clarify them uh, and make it a lot easier for you. So um, there's a lot to talk about, and the first thing is about homework summaries. So homework summaries is something that shows up here in the student portal. It's where you are submitting a summary of what you did in the previous week. And they're extremely important because I use summaries in order to help determine uh, where to investigate when marking, because I'll see that in a big list. And so let's talk about some things that I care about when we are considering the summary. So the summary should be treated like your weekly standup. We're not talking about Jerry Seinfeld here. Uh, we are talking about what it's like when you're working at a startup, a tech company, this is a project management tool um, where uh, all your team members meet in a room, they stand up, the idea is they can say what they did or what they're going to do uh, in a meeting that uh, you don't have to sit down for. And so the idea is that you need to be concise in what you are writing here. And what I want you to write are things like what you plan to accomplish, what were your obstacles and did you overcome them? Because we want to know if there's any blockers there for you. Uh, what did you attempt as your homework challenges? Uh, things like that. You can't really talk about what you're going to do because um, I'm leading the instruction. It's not that kind of thing, but it is what about what did you do the prior week? And so here's an example one that I wrote. So I said, I was able to complete all the required assignments without issue. Uh, for my homework challenges, I did this. So this is very concise. And these are very useful for me as an instructor because I can then go see a list of um, what everyone's done and scan it. And then it helps me drill down and look at your materials and things like that. So make sure that you write it, make sure it's concise. Um, and that's that. So just to show you, there are some things I want you to tell you about this form. The first thing is that you can update it as much as you want until the next class. Once it's the next class, uh, the last submission will lock it. You won't be able to submit it anymore. If you are late, um, you should be able to still submit it, but then it will lock. And we'll know that it's late because it's time stamped. So if you're late by a few days, I do not care. If you're late by weeks, uh, that is uh, a concern because you know if you dump a bunch of stuff and you backfill, I'm not gonna like that. It's gonna look like cheating to me, but there are exceptions and accommodations. If you ask well in advance, your instructor, your organizer, me, um, and so I have an accommodation box in the student portal that you only fill out if I tell you to fill it out. Don't fill it out if I don't tell you to fill it out. If I see you fill it out, I'm going to ignore it, um, you know, because it's, it's up to me to say whether I accept that or not. If you do not tell me in advance, I'm just not going to make exceptions for it, okay? Um, so that is that there. Now let's take a look at completing required work. So the idea is that I've created this checklist so that you know what it is that you're supposed to do for each week. This is not going to be readily available at the day of the class because of the nature of our classes. We do live streams and there's things I want you to do in those live streams, but we don't finish everything because we have guest instructors and it might be the first time that they are instructing. They're experts in their field, but the pacing might be off. So it, we, don't, we run at a time uh, or there are networking technical issues. So we run out of time and we have a hard stop after two hours. Or I decide that, you know, maybe the content needs additional stuff. And so I will go record additional stuff. And that will usually happen same day or the next day. And so you have to watch the live stream. You have to watch those additional materials. You have to do the things that I'm doing in there. And so you'll see that I have on the right hand side, watch the live stream video watch the spend and security videos, and then a bunch of actionables that are tied to videos showing you how to do it. Um, every single week, there is a spend and security considerations. Um, those are by Chirag and Ash, uh, Ashish. And so you need to watch those and those have quizzes that also have to be submitted by the end of the week so that not only did you watch it, but you understood the knowledge from it. Um, and so these are all required. Unless I put in parentheses optional, you have to do all the things in this checklist. So when I say homework, I'm talking about, because uh, homework means more than one thing. There's the homework summary, that's like your weekly standup. There's uh, 
required homework. That's just stuff that we could not get done during the live stream. Or if you did not complete during the live stream, it's stuff that you have to finish and check off here. Uh, and then there is homework challenges, which we'll talk about next week. Remember, everything builds off of last week. So if you do not finish the required work, you'll probably fall behind and you risk failing. Um, so there is that. So if it's on the checklist, it's probably required. Um, but we'll talk about homework challenges next because that is something that's very important. I do want to uh, note that this UI, this uh, student portal is built uh, very quickly and dirty. And so when you checkbox these things, you still have to hit update checklist at the bottom um, because we're just not using JavaScript. So just consider that in the UI. Okay, so homework challenges. This thing is super, 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 super important for your grade if you want to make Red Squad. Um, so the idea behind homework challenges is to demonstrate that you can do work on your own outside of the instruction-led video or the live stream videos. And the reason why this is so important is because when uh, folks are trying to hire you, they want to know that you can do more than just follow instructions. When you go to a job, they're not going to tutorialize everything for you and help you get through it. They want you to be able to do things on your own, to think creatively. And homework challenges is your opportunity to do that. So we have suggestions. These aren't things you have to do. These are suggestions. So I talk to the guest instructors and say, what are good challenges to do? And we fill them out. And you can do these ones or you can come up with your own. As long as they're related to the scope of the project, to the scope of the week, then it makes sense. You might say, well, Andrew, what if I, want, I have a good idea for a challenge, but it's outside the scope of a week? You can do it, but do the, the scope of the weeks first and treat that as like an extra thing. Um, and maybe put it at the end or on the back burner it, uh, once you finish all your weekly challenges. But um, generally you want them to be in scope. So remember, these are homework challenges. They're not the required homework. Um, for that, okay? So the question is, is where do you document this? And this is gonna be in the journal directory in your GitHub repository. Very, very, very important that your repo is named AWS Bootcamp Crutter 2023, that you, that you put your documentation in this journal because I'm hyperlinking all these things in the student portal. If I can't click through and find the resource because you did not enter your GitHub URL incorrectly, uh, that you did not uh, uh, put it in the right file, like in the, the markdown file somewhere else, I'm not gonna be able to find it. I'm not gonna go digging for it. I have thousands of students to mark. So make sure you put it in the right place. So if it's week zero, put the documentation in week zero.md. .md is a markdown file. If you don't know how to use a markdown file, go to YouTube, type in markdown tutorial. I'm sure there's a 15 minute video. You can learn it real quick um, and put your stuff in there all your assets and all the other stuff can go in the repo, right? That's why in the homework summary, it's just text, it's just a summary. You don't put, like here, folks are saying like, how do I upload an image here? You don't. You don't put links, you don't put images, nothing in there. What you do is you put it in here into the, the week zero uh, file and you can upload images and documents and all sorts of things to GitHub. You can do it through Gitpod, you can do it through GitHub directly. Uh, so go figure that out. Remember to show proof of work. And when I say that, like we'll give our architectural des uh, design as an example, week zero. So we made an architectural diagram. You can take a screenshot and put it in there, right? But how do I know that you made it? Well, what's better than a screenshot? A screenshot plus a link to your Lucid charts because then I can click through, it's a unique account. You didn't use someone else's account. Um, and you didn't just take an image and steal it and modify it, it's there, right? You know the napkins? That's what I was saying, go find a napkin, write on it, right? Go find a napkin at your local place and take a, uh, take a thing because I'll know it's a real thing, but you can put your name on it and some people are doing that uh, and put that up because that is more uh, uh, real, more proof of work than just having the basic stuff. Another thing I want to note, I didn't write it in here, but you know, it's best to try to use for especially for the required work, not necessarily homework challenges, but for the required work, which you have to have in your repo as well, um, is the, um, pardon me, 
is the uh, is using the tools that I've laid out for you to use. So I said to use Lucid Charts for the required work. Um, so if we go back here for a moment, okay. Uh, so in here we have one that says recreate conceptual design of Lucid Charts or on a napkin. So you would take that napkin and you put it under homework challenges. Yes, homework challenges is stretched up, but you've got to put it somewhere. So you put it there. Um, but the point is, is that if you have required work and I use Lucid Charts, you should use Lucid Charts too. Because if you use something like Draw.io and I have issues with Draw.io, I'm just not going to mark it. I'm not going to count it. So, uh, you know, at your own risk, use the tools that you like to use, but it might affect your grade, okay? When it comes to the homework challenges outside the required work, um, I'm going to look at those differently, okay? So maybe you want your homework challenge to uh, to create an architectural diagram in PowerPoint, in Draw.io, uh, in Figma, and stuff, because maybe you're into product design and that's your, your focus for cloud. Then that's okay. But if it's the required work, that's a different story. So just understand those two differences there, okay? Uh, and again, remember you put it in the right, uh, right file. Don't rename these files because uh, I'm going to click through onto those files. So how does homework affect my grades? Looking at the grading rubric, I realize I need some weights in here because I treat some of these things bigger than others. If you get level fours in everything, right, that doesn't mean you get red squad uh, because if everyone's in level four, then I have to choose who will be a red squad and then who will not be in Red Squad. And the big uh, differences are gonna be the cloud technical essay and the homework uh, uh, challenge completion. Homework challenge completion has more weight than anything else in this. And we'll talk about that in a moment. All the other stuff, instructional completion, this stuff is, I just expect everyone to do this. Um, and I expect you to make this very easy for me to mark, right? By following the tools that I'm using and putting things in the right place. Cloud career stuff, this is easy stuff. You should be able to do all four of these, no problem. These quizzes, they should be easy to do. You watch the videos, you do the quizzes. I don't care if you get 100% on these quizzes. I care that you do them and you generally get good on them. If you get zeros in all of them, that's not a good thing. If you get you know, 75%, 60%, that's okay. Um, so just understand that. You do not see the grades of quizzes uh, right away. We kind of keep those obscure for quite a while. That's to avoid any kind of cheating um, and stuff like that. So hopefully that makes sense. I said it just a moment ago. Red Squad has a limited amount of badges, right? I don't have a number, but I'm going to put a number on it. Uh, and I'm going to figure that out as I'm looking at um, the student uh, progression. I'm going to be looking at that and deciding. So we'll figure that out as we go. But when it comes down to the wire, you can get all level fours but that doesn't mean you're gonna get Red Squad. I might bump you down. So the way I'm gonna determine it is by looking at what you do to exceed the project beyond its basic capabilities. And that's gonna be best shown through homework challenges and then making a really good study case in, the, um, in your technical essay. So homework challenges uh, that would be very impressive would be some kind of large additional component to the application. So one thing that we didn't have time to do was like search. Search would have been awesome. Uh, to use search, you'd have to use an, uh, a, like a search tool like um, uh, Open Search or things like that. And so that would be something that you could code. Or we looked at in our architectural diagram that in the Twitter design, you don't just pull from the database, you have a timeline service that has a special algorithm um, that is very hard to code. So that could be something that you do. Maybe you're product focused, so you make all the mobile design because you want that to look really good and you uh, work on the performance of the application. Maybe you're security focused so that you do vulnerability testing and, and other things on the application to harden the application and demonstrate that you've hardened it uh, as an example, right? How would you make it compliant with particular uh, things, you know, like, or like a particular um, uh, certs, uh, <laughs> security certs? So there are things that you can do and you have to be creative about it. Uh, so that is something uh, there for you to consider. When is homework due? Each class builds off the last. Required work, instructional homework is due next class. If it's not done, you're gonna get stuck. Homework challenges 
can be worked beyond the week class because you know if you're if it's week zero and you want to add a little bit more you can add a little bit more i don't mind that you do that um, but generally once we mark it it's graded and then we might give it a look over um, at the end of the project but generally it'll be like a week after it's graded so just consider that so you do have some time afterwards um, you can do additional homework challenges as, as we said um, but they are outside, the, like that are outside the context of all classes, uh, but they still have to be in scope of the project. It's just if you have an idea that's not in the scope of one of the weeks, like I just listed the search functionality, that doesn't fit in any week. So that could be something that you want to do that you have in the back of your mind, and maybe you're just implementing it bit by bit over time. Um, so consider that as well. If you need accommodations or exceptions, they need, need to be made well in advance with the organizer, me, um, uh, if you're facing any kind of external issues. And that's going to be based on my own judgment. So, you know, I don't have to accept it, but um, you can submit it very early and like just tell me personally in the Discord and I will decide whether I'll accept it. And then I'll tell you to fill in that box. Only fill in that accommodation box if I tell you. If you fill it in and I didn't tell you, I'm going to know. I'm not going to like it. So just understand that. So yeah, that's when homework is due. When do you see your grades? Well, students will be graded as the bootcamp progresses. That's just so that we can expedite grading. So at the end of the bootcamp, we're not waiting forever to see grades. I don't know how much additional time we need after the bootcamp because I might want to give you a bit of buffer to do some things uh, with that. Maybe we'll do it at end of May, but we'll really have to decide as we get into marking here if we can keep up with it. Um, uh, we might release feedback notes and grade levels. I've coded into the platform, so I can write notes. My TAs can write notes uh, there. We can even show you the grade level for each week, whatever we want to. Right now, I'm not giving a promise uh, for that because I just don't know how I can keep up. I'll probably selectively do it, but we will be grading as we go. Um, at the end of the boot camp, you will get a weekly breakdown of all, like every single week, you'll have a score from zero to four uh, for each week, right? Zero means you did nothing. But if you get zero for a week, I don't know how you'd continue forward. I suppose it's just that you did not submit anything, but you might have done it. So there could be that thing there. Quiz scores will not be shown immediately. Quiz scores will be shown at some point in the future to prevent cheating. I say some point because we haven't decided if it's just a week or two after. Um, but the idea is just make sure you get those submitted and they're generally correct and you understand them and please do not cheat. Please do not try to, um, uh, you know, figure it out with, as a group. Do them as individuals, please. Your scores are private. We do not rank students. Folks ask me, can you make a leaderboard while we are doing this boot camp? No, because I don't want it to be that kind of competition. I do not want folks to um, uh, like to discourage folks that are their goals are different than others and to see them ranked at the bottom. I think that getting any badge level is an, a great achievement and you have to set your own personal goals, okay? So if your goal is to get through this boot camp and complete the baseline project because you're a beginner and so you're going beyond uh, what you, a beginner would normally do, that's great, right? If you are an advanced uh, user and you have to get that red squad, that's great. But I don't want to have that kind of um, level of uh, public competitiveness. Um, digital badges are really the only way that uh, there can be a public ranking because you fit into one of those four. And it's up to you to share those badges out. We might have a wall of badges uh, that are accessible to find, but that doesn't necessarily will mean we'll make it easy to search. Um, we will give you a report card to download at the end of the bootcamp. So if you want to share it, you want to show what your your breakdown was for whatever reason you can do that um but yeah hopefully that clarifies a lot of stuff there for you um sorry for all the text it takes time to make these things and i just want to get on to the next class but i will see you there and enjoy the rest of the boot camp ciao